in the life of a vehicle, what happens? Well, when this vehicle is completely finished, it's no longer rotable, it's gonna to go to an auto shredder somewhere here in the United States. When you make the motor blocks and all the aluminum components on this vehicle behind me, it's coming from recycled aluminum. You just don't put the two together. Well, we look here, we see a truckload of old vehicles coming in here to be processed. Look, you know, these vehicles weigh over 2,000 pounds each. The job of a metal recycler in the recycled materials industry is to separate the different types of materials like you see here. You know, you got aluminum, you got some radiators and irrigation pipe. All this gets separated to the alloy of the metals. And then it goes to our baler. And look at that. This material handler by Caterpillar is loading this conveyor. You know, it picks this stuff up as if it was nothing. So it's this material here, baled, ready to go, shipped into a secondary aluminum manufacturer, like most, this just comes from all over the United States. It's definitely my world here. Oh, yes. <laughs> the, the, signs. The, yeah, the, this, you know, if you look at a Sierra brochure and the two Ram balers that we make, this is, this is our stuff right here. Because oh, yeah. we make the balers that uh, make this. It's this type of material that we'll see processed at most in a shredder there, because when they shred it, they eliminate any potential elements of steel or other non-aluminum elements. They pull that out so they have a really clean aluminum that goes into their furnaces and it makes the alloy they need that the automotive industry in America can, can use. But at the end of the process of this multi-million dollar operation here, we're gonna be able to pick up a piece of that car in the palm of our hand. And after they put the end of life automobile in there, they shred it, still goes one way. The non-ferrous metals go another way. And that non-ferrous material could be stainless, it could be aluminum, it could be copper. When they separate it, now they have cleaned it out, they separate it to an aluminum grade and it's called Zorba. Repurposed, season three aluminum, Little Rock, Arkansas. Right. Right. What we're going to see here is how the aluminum is now separated and where no, that's no, going to be no. made into secondary aluminum for other industries that use it, such as the automotive, marine industry, recreation vehicles, medical supplies, so on and so forth. It's going to be a great day. What am I standing in front of? Well, I'm standing in front of a big pile of what they call Zorba. The big thing about uh, a heavy media plant such as Alltech is that we process Zorba, the non-ferrous metal uh, residues from shredders. Zorba is the residual of a shredding operation that has separated magnetic from non-magnetic materials. 
the magnetic materials is ferrous, and that is on its way to a steel mill to be made into new steel. Separate the aluminum from the other metals and make it into a product that can be melted here in the U.S. Zorba is mostly aluminum, has copper, it has brass, and it has stainless steel in it. And before this product can be made into a secondary aluminum product, it has to be separated, it has to be cleaned. It's gotta go through another process because in Zorba, there's a lot of contaminants and these contaminants aren't waste or junk or trash. They're other metals that don't mix in a smelting plant. They pull out the copper. They're gonna pull out a little bit of steel, what might be left over or they're gonna pull out stainless steel. We don't have to export it and have those raw materials leave the US. I think we all know that raw materials are in short supply. So the more that we can process here to then be melted here, help that loop of recycling and keep uh, manufacturing more local than exporting it. And then it goes through this plant and it's incredible what it does, all the magnetic separators. The main stages of our operations just making sure that our densities are right. So the density is basically running off of gravity. There is no mechanical failures really that can even impact that because it's basically gravity. So the gravity is going to float different metals at different densities. Twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five, eighty-five, ninety-five, dollar fifty-six. <laughs> All the cleaning and washing and pulling and sorting, and what comes out at the end? It's called twitch. Twitch. So this has already gone through an extensive separation and cleaning process so that you, Scott, when you're putting it in the furnace, you have a great sense of what you're gonna get out of it, right? It's certainly one of our preferred materials. We consume a lot of twitch uh, every month. Uh, we, we have to have quite a wide assortment to make sure that we hit our alloy grades, but it is one of our preferred, I'm sure. And then that aluminum will be melted and it's gonna be made into ingot or into molten aluminum that'll end up going to Toyota right next door, making the engine heads for the Toyotas that are made here in America. Check one, two, check one, two. I'm Jim Clements. I'm the general manager for Missouri Smelting Technology. My name's Mark Moore. Uh, I work for Toyota Two Show America as the general manager in our resources recycling group. So the main thing we do in that group is uh, we're recycling aluminum into a product uh, that can be used by our end users and consumers in the form of uh, solid, which is aluminum ingot, and also in uh, molten form or liquid. In, in Troy, Missouri at the smelting plant most, we met with uh, Mark Moore. Mark is the general manager there and he handles um, the plants in which used recycled aluminum and Scotty gave us a tour and Jen Clements. So what you see there is you see all this processed aluminum from metal recyclers across America and you see them process it. That gets in there, they separate it for grades because chemistry is important. The alloy content that is made there is important for motor blocks, cylinder heads and different components that go into the U.S. automotive industry. You ever wonder what happens to old truck wheels and automobile wheels made of aluminum? Well, let me tell you, they're going to end up in a secondary aluminum smelter like here in Troy, Missouri and Missouri Smelting Technology, or better known as most. This company is a secondary aluminum smelter. They make aluminum ingot and also make molten aluminum products. And this secondary aluminum processor is making their product from failed recycled aluminum 
or the shredded material we saw at All Tech in Little Rock, Arkansas. And what they do here is they will take these wheels, they're gonna shred them, and when they make the shredded material, this will then be melted into aluminum ingot or made into molten aluminum. And these belts will be shredded, blended with the All Tech shredded material, and it's gonna make the secondary aluminum products that are gonna be sent out into the automotive industry, the recreation vehicle industry, and many other industries that need recycled aluminum to make the products we use in our everyday life. Recycled aluminum is the backbone for the automotive industry. When does the light bulb go off for most people who come in here and realize that you're an integral part of manufacturing in this country? I think when they finally get a grip on some of the uh, recycled materials that actually show up at our facility and they see the magnitude of some of the uh, items like wheels and some of the other uh, recycled materials. Don't recognize. Yep. Aluminum pots and pans. This is part of, this is going to come back to something you're using and this all was manufactured from recycled aluminum. They realize that they're a part of a much bigger segment of industry. This looks one of them sandwich makers right here. Yep. So, panini press. huh? Panini press. A panini, panini press. press. Yeah. Food. Yep. Now, here's the thing. Try eating without recycled aluminum. Try eating without recycled iron. You're not going to, because who's going to harvest the food? Who are those plants that are made? You can't build those plants without recycled metals now. Most makes products from recycled aluminum that goes into the U.S. auto industry. And that's where the end of life, this is where the end of life, the stuff that's not in the blue bin. I gotta be honest, this is such a great learning experience about all the metals that come from all the place that makes product that goes into our daily lives, especially the automotive industry. Incredible. You're seeing many different types of byproducts from manufacturing or obsolete aluminum. And as we know, aluminum is infinitely recyclable. The Aluminum Association thinks that 70 to 75 percent of the aluminum that's ever been produced is still in circulation. That doesn't happen without the aluminum recyclers and smelters that are the backbone of that industry in the United States. If, if those entities go away, uh, the aluminum has to go back to being pulled up from the ground in a much more energy intensive process. When I think about the amount of material we managed to send through the furnaces and recycle and turn it into a viable product, still to this day it amazes me how much is coming into this facility and being transformed. Here we have our furnaces. We can, we can stand right here and look, you can see. We operate five different uh, melting furnaces, all with varying capacities. Uh, we produce two, two products out the back, which is the molten product and an ingot or a solid product. So all of our material is charged into the side well, uh, which would be kind of a charge well on the uh, sides of the furnaces, or uh, the, like these large solids get put in the main bath directly. What temperature are we melting the molten aluminum that you ship to the end user? What, what's the temperature? There? So uh, aluminum melts at between 1200 and 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. We typically hold anywhere from uh, 13, 1350, 14, 1450, even at the 1500 for certain alloys which uh, require higher temperatures to make sure they stay homogenous or uh, all the materials stay mixed within it.
right, here's what we're doing. We're waiting for them to, to fill a, a ladle of molten aluminum to do the handoff. This is our ladle process. So this is that, what I was saying before, the just-in-time delivery. So with the die caster we are connected to right next door, they come down, they take a ladle, uh, they bring us back the empty, we bring it to one of these pouring stations, fill it with molten aluminum, make sure we, we test it and clean it up, and then send it right back and they take it right back and put it in their machines. So from the time it's poured out of the ladle to the time it's poured into their die cast machines, it's usually less than 30 minutes, but really? usually, but we're actually turning ladles. We have a ladle being produced when they're not at lunch every 15 minutes. on the next episode of Repurposed. Our industry is a great driver of employment in America today. Yeah, there is a lot of opportunity here and to that point, yeah, you don't need a four-year degree to come work here, but if you come work here and you have aspirations for a four-year degree, guess what? We have tuition reimbursement. Do you so, really? That's yeah, fantastic. absolutely. So not only do we provide training here that can help you develop and advance, but if someone is interested, they can go on the outside and, you know, go to an educational institution.